Hi, this is Jay Dillon, founder and principal of Alumni Identity Consultants. And I'm happy to share with you today a preview of the keynote presentation I gave to the West Coast Marketing Group Conference at Fresno State University in early 2019. Thank you for joining me. The title of this talk is When FaceTime and Events No Longer Matter, Next Level Alumni Metrics in the Digital Age. Advancement. I think it's important to remember where we all started in this business. Here's a picture of me, yes, in the red shirt at UCLA in my senior year, where I got my first job in fundraising. I was selling alumni memberships to my peers during the last quarter of our senior year. And that peer-to-peer -peer sales experience is really what prepped me for thinking about data in the context of alumni engagement and fundraising. I got a lot of data in trying to sell alumni association memberships to my peers. So as I begin this presentation, I invite you to think about how you got started in this business, because after all, nobody can really go to school for alumni engagement and fundraising. So how do we measure 21st century alumni engagement? I recently became a dad, and this is my son, Alex's abacus. And I started thinking about metrics in the context of counting. And what is an abacus really good for? It's really good for counting things. Ace white paper on alumni engagement metrics. I invite you to think about it as counting, because that's really what it is. It's asking you to start counting things. Think of this abacus as the entire world of your alumni base, and Case tells you you should be counting members, donors, attendees, and volunteers, and then the number of alumni engaged at your institution is a net of those four values. But there are some important things that are being left out. Everyone does an e-newsletter. Why are we not counting email readers? And what about Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and other social media? accounts and interactions. We're really missing digital engagement entirely in the context of what CASE is promoting. I've started to call it lowest common denominator alumni metrics. And you don't have to agree with me, but I hope you see my point. That counting fails to reveal anything meaningful about the alumni being counted. What does it even mean to say that someone showed up at an event or became a member or a donor. It's really just a one or a zero in your database. In my 15 years in alumni engagement and fundraising, I started to think about metrics as needing to pass a test. And so this is my alumni metric test. In order for an alumni metric to be useful, it has to check these three boxes. It has to measure the engagement level of each graduate. It has to predict that graduate's inclination to donate, and it has to respond to direct institutional intervention. So it's got to measure, predict, and respond. So at the conference, I took a poll of everyone in the room and asked them what type of alumni metrics they use. And so here are the results. How many of these do you use? The case metric that we've already talked about, counting things, maybe a homegrown engagement score, a satisfaction or attitude survey, a net promoter score, something else, or as we laughed about at the conference, metrics, that would be cool. But of all of these things, which of them do you use and which of them would really pass the alumni metric test? Probably not that many. So why is that? Why are we so stuck? Well, the reality is that Target, Walmart, and other private sector retail companies and consumer brands, they know way more about our alumni than we do. And all of those things on the prior screen, the surveys of 
satisfaction and attitudes and countings and net promoter scores, that's not going to get us any closer to being able to understand our alumni better. For us to be successful at our work and engagement and fundraising, we need to know who our alumni are, where they are, and what they're doing. And first, we can accept the reality that other people are doing that better. But there's one thing that all those retail brands don't have, and that is a deep connection to their customers, the way alumni are connected to their alma mater. And take this person, for example, Yukon Josh. So he is such a big fan of his university that he's got the alumni license plate, he has the custom license plate frame, and he's got UC Josh and his vanity plate. I don't think there's anybody out there with a Target, Amazon, or Walmart license plate, or license plate frame, or vanity plate that says Target fan or Walmart shopper. I mean, maybe there is, but I don't think so. There is a uniquely American relationship between alumni and their alma mater, and that is something that we can tap into as alumni engagement and fundraising professionals that retail brands cannot. And this is our edge in being able to know our alumni better than anyone else. As I went down this road in my doctoral program, I started thinking about how can we measure who alumni are, what they are doing, and where they are. And I stumbled upon something called role identity. And I'll take you back to college, maybe to a psychology class that you took, and remind you that role identity is a foundational social psycholo psychological theory. It's one of the oldest ways of understanding how human beings interact with each other. And it's based on this idea that a person's identity is comprised of the roles that they occupy. And I've listed some of the theorists there. But for example, you may think of yourself as a daughter or son, a sister or brother, a husband or father, a churchgoer, a basketball player. Any of these things are important to creating your self-identity. And what I decided to do was to try insert alumni into that matrix and build upon some of the work of Travis McDearman to identify alumni identity as a measure of how much of who you are is related to your alma mater. This is a quantitative way of understanding how much of your graduates, how much of their self-identity they would say came from their transformational experience with you at your institution. Alumni identity is measured through a questionnaire. It's very simple. It takes three or four minutes to complete, and you can try it yourself at score.alumniidentity.com. So try out your own alumni identity score. It's based on three dimensions of role identity. Again, going back to this theory, identity salience, where we ask people to agree or disagree with statements like, being an alumnus is something I often think about, or being an alumna is an important part of who I am. And then we ask them in the survey to next reflect on social perceptions, on how many people they know are not aware that they're an alumnus of a specific institution, or to agree or disagree that it's important to my friends and family that I am an alumna. And then role expectations. Again, going back to this unique American experience where we're expected to identify with our schools, how much does this alumnus or alumna feel it is their duty to support their alma mater, or are they expected to help current students? So we ask people to agree or disagree with these 15 statements in this quick three to four minute questionnaire. We get the alumni identity score, which quantifies the alumni to alma mater relationship in a single meaningful metric. So let's take this alumni identity score through the alumni metric test. Number one, does it measure engagement? Here's a chart from one of my past clients and looking at the number of volunteer opportunities completed 
and alumni identity score. And we can see there's a really strong correlation between those two things, that the more opportunities an alumna or alumnus has completed, they're higher, the higher their alumni identity score. So yes, it does measure engagement. And two, does the alumni identity score predict giving? Here again is a chart from a separate client looking at the average alumni identity score by donor status. Someone who had made a gift to the university has a much higher average alumni identity score than someone who does not. And on the scale here, it doesn't look like it's a lot, but that's almost a 10 point increase in terms of identity between non-donors and donors. So alumni identity score is in fact a great predictor of giving. And further, to look at this from another client, check out the average annual gift size based upon alumni identity score. And you can see the actual figures in this light blue mountains and valleys, and then the trend line in this purple color. Look at alumni identity score in giving, and you can very clearly see that alumni identity score is an effective and efficient way of predicting not only whether or not someone will become a donor, but how much their annual gift will be. And then the third part of our metric test, can alumni identity score be influenced? And the answer there is yes. Based upon my research and work with several clients, there are five things that influence alumni identity the most. Volunteering, joining the university's official LinkedIn network, liking the university's Facebook page, attending an event, or opening even just one alumni e-newsletter. Here's another look at the same data. At the bottom, you've got three of those five things that we just talked about influencing alumni identity. Event attendance, liking the Facebook page, and joining an official alumni network group on LinkedIn. What we're seeing in the taller of the two columns is the increase in the average alumni identity score of alumni who completed this behavior. So people who attended an event have an alumni identity score of over 54, which is very high compared to the average shown in the smaller bo uh, bar below, which was just above 50. And same thing for liking a Facebook event, and then slightly better increase for people who had joined a LinkedIn group. What I'd like to point out here, and maybe you already caught it, take a look at how similar event attendance and Facebook are in terms of increasing someone's alumni identity. These two behaviors have equal influence on alumni identity score. And I'd ask you to reflect on that for a moment and think about how you can reach so many more alumni through digital engagement versus through event engagement and examine the cost between the two. And my argument here is if we can increase the alumni identity of our graduates, that thing that we know is high, highly correlated with giving. If we can do that by just investing in digital engagement and getting more people to like our Facebook page, man, we would not have to run so many events. So we've passed the alumni metric test with alumni identity and the alumni identity score. And I just want to reinforce what we've been talking about. Engagement is about who alumni are. That's something that alumni identity can measure. Affinity and pride is something that alumni have. And if you have something, you can lose it. So there's a big difference between measuring how much of someone's self-identity is related to their alma mater and how much somebody might have pride or affinity for or feel connected to or be a fan of their institution. This is not just a nuanced point. It's really a chasm between these two things. Measuring alumni identity is not measuring affinity and pride because identity is something about who alumni are and affinity and pride is something that alumni have. And again, if you have something, you can lose it. So let's talk about next level alumni metrics. You don't have to use alumni identity or the alumni identity score as an approach. But here are three recommendations I have for making the alumni metric 
you're seeking fit what you need in our alumni metric test. First, thinking back to that abacus and what CASE recommends, it's good data. And I invite you to gather as much alumni behavioral data as possible and go through all automated means and go well beyond what CASE recommends. Second, develop a mechanism to measure alumni connection that passes the alumni metric test. Avoid some of these complex things that we've talked about, net promoter scores or satisfaction or attitude surveys, because let's be honest, people just don't use that information. Find the simplest solution. Ask alumni, how connected do you feel to your alma mater? And build a metric around that answer. And then finally, take those behaviors you've been tracking and run it up against things that influence those behaviors. Take a look at events and especially digital engagement. And then invest in marketing communications, programming, and services that promote these behaviors and divest from those that do not. So I'm gonna leave you with this final thought that no matter how you choose to approach alumni engagement and fundraising and finding a metric that works for both, remember that alumni engage because of who they are and not who you want them to be. That's what alumni identity and my work as a consultant and as a researcher is all about. And if this presentation has piqued your interest, I invite you to try your own alumni identity score and see if it reflects how you feel about your alma mater. And it will even try and predict your giving at the end of the survey. And for more resources and research on alumni identity, please take a moment to visit alumniidentity.com and subscribe to the blog and check out the resources and research that are available there. Now I've worked with five colleges and universities to field this study so far, and I can tell you the impact on their engagement and fundraising operations has been enormous. If you are interested in learning more about what it would look like to do an alumni identity assessment and predictive model, of alumni at your institution, please reach out to me personally. You can get in touch with me at alumniidentity.com or via LinkedIn. Thank you for your time. And again, remember, alumni engage because of who they are, 